in a world where zombies, ghosts, serial killers, and vampires all exist. It's Nico, Brian, Mike, and Dustin, and they are all that stand between you and the films that could end the world. Welcome to the Don't Go Out There Horror Movie Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Don't Go Out There Horror Movie Review Podcast. Just want to thank all our fans and listeners. We really appreciate it. Uh, just want to give a quick shout out to our website, don'tgooutthere.com. We have all of our episodes, interviews, all of our celebrity intros, and our store on there, and our blog. Check it out. And we uh, just want to give a quick shout out to our social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just search for Don't Go Out There, and you'll find Brian's awesome graphics, uh, artwork for uh, for the show. And keep in touch with us because we got a lot of giveaways and all that coming up soon. And this week's film review is Brother Dustin's pick, 2006's See No Evil with the most famous or one of the most famous wrestlers of all time, Kane, a.k.a. Glenn Jacobs. Uh, Dustin, you want to go first on your quick thoughts, man? General thoughts of the movie? Sure. So this movie came out uh, in 2006. I graduated high school in 2006. Uh, the same month. The month this movie was released uh-huh. is I actually it released on May 19th, which we'll get into the significance of May 19th in a little bit. I graduated <laughs> May 20th. And so uh, the day after uh, or actually the day before I graduated, my cousin Cody and I, we went to the movie theater and saw this movie. Like I said before, it's no secret. I'm a huge wrestling fan. Uh, I didn't know at the time that he would you know, be a mayor in my neck of the woods, but I've always been a Kane fan as well. And so I was like, yeah, let's go check it out. I like the movie. I think it's a an easy watch. I think it's a quick watch, uh, 86 minutes or something like that. And it's it's got a good pacing to it. There's not much filler. There's not much, you know, it, it's it's a, it's an easy watch that uh, will help pass the time. You know, you can throw it on any time. And, yeah, I just, uh, once you guys asked me to, to come aboard, it was one of the first movies that popped into my mind. It's like, we've got to do See No Evil. Shout out to my mayor, Glenn Jacobs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go next real quick. Uh, I remember, uh, I remember watching this movie with my girlfriend at the time. Uh, it has a little bit of high school nostalgia to it. Uh, I like, I like Kane, like all of us here. I'm not a wrestling fan currently, but I, I love the WWF, WCW back in the day. You know, everyone knew who Kane was. I love Kane. Uh, this, like Dustin says, movie is a quick watch. It's a fun watch. And I'm going. I'm looking forward to reviewing this movie, honestly. I haven't watched it in a while. I think it might have been on Netflix a few years ago, and I watched it, but I haven't watched it in a good minute, and I enjoyed rewatching it. Uh, Mike, you go next, man. Yeah. So on this show, I'm the other resident wrestling fan. I don't know if I've ever even said that on this show, but in case you haven't noticed, me and Dustin got a wrestling fans. Um, yeah. So I kind of have the same feeling that you guys do about this movie. Very nostalgic for for maybe some different reasons. One. This is very of its time. This is very Saw, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the way it's shot, the you know the way they use the gore. That uh, that obviously not as gory as those movies, but there's a lot of that like grungy, dirty, kind of bleh to to this movie that I actually like. I like that aesthetic because again, it's nostalgic for me. It's of its time. Uh, I enjoy this movie. Like you guys said, quick watch. Um, Not. Again, this is definitely not the worst movie that we've had to watch for this show. Uh, that goes to audition. However, it's definitely not the best. I have some nitpicks, and the end really pisses me off. But, I, I, I mean, outside of that, I like the plot. I think it's a it's a good little horror movie. Shout out to WV for actually doing something right for once. <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat with uh, with Nico as far as my wrestling. I used to love it back in the late 80s and through the 90s, but uh, – I don't really watch it currently. Um, I mean, this movie doesn't have any nostalgia for me personally. Um, I, I hadn't even honestly seen it until uh, this weekend. Um, but, you know, it's fine. It's fine. I pretty much agree with what you guys said. You know, it borrows heavily from other horror franchises. And sometimes sometimes in this film, it's a huge distraction for me. And I'm like, really? And then, yeah. other, you know, other times it's done well and it doesn't take me out of it. Um, I mean, I accept it for what it is. Um, they were not out here trying to make something you know revolutionary or anything i mean they were capitalizing on you know kane at at the time like you know the wwe always has and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't um 
I mean, don't get me wrong. I think this film has, you know, some pretty big problems as a, as a you know, a film. But, I mean, I can see how you wouldn't like this, but I can also see how you would. Um, I'm kind of just middle of the road on this one. I mean, I can take it or leave it. But, you know, like you said, it was an easy watch. That's thankfully. Yeah, runtime was a huge plus. Big yeah. plus yep. in this movie. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I actually disagree with Dustin. We'll get into it later. I think there is some filler, uh, but we'll get into it later. There's I, also I, I, a whole I said not, I said not a lot. Hey, there's also a whole lot of call me sometime. But anyway. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> y'all, y'all boys ready to jump into the scene by scene? Yeah. All right. The film starts with a boy in a cage uh, with the opening credits. Uh, we see the uh, rundown home he lives in. Uh, two cops show up uh, to the home and open the door, and they hear a woman scream. There's blood. There's blood on the wall. And then we hear the song Jesus Loves the Little Cheer- Children playing. And I, it's really creepy how it's playing. Uh, yeah. Then they find the woman. They're horrified when they see her. And then the, our star, Cain, Jacob, his name is Jacob, what, Goodnight, I think is what it is? Goodnight. Jacob, Goodnight. Jacob appears behind a curtain and bludgeons one of the officers. And then he cuts off uh, Officer Frank's arm. And then uh, Frank shoots him. And then Jacob, and he runs off. And then the officer, he radios for help, and then the camera cuts to the woman, and we see that her eyes have been gouged out. Uh, <laughs> now other cops, the news, ambulances, they all show up, and you know they start searching in the house. The two are taken out on stretchers, Officer Frank and the woman. Now it says four years later, and Frank still relives the day his arm got cut off and his partner died. Now Frank and his partner, Hannah, are taking some, I wrote, delinquent slash prisoners to do some community service. I wrote, there's a lot of drama as they board this bus. Uh, a rap song out of nowhere comes on as the bus leaves. <laughs> Tyson and Michael, they fight almost instantly. And then Richie tries to make a proposition with Tyson as they get to the Blackwell Hotel. They're greeted by Margaret. She tells them this will be a shelter for the homeless. They're there to help clean up. Margaret takes them on a tour. And I just wrote, the place is a dump. <laughs> and a fire is what damaged the place. And then she starts putting them to work. That's the two opening scenes I wrote down. And uh, Brian said he has an epic dad joke for us, so I'm ready to hear that. I can't wait. Every yeah. dad joke, every dad joke's epic. I just want, oh, let's just put that in there. Let's just go God ahead. Damn it. Um, yeah. So the opening reminds me a lot of Saw. Uh, Saw opening. Um, mm-hmm. And as a matter of fact, I think like the whole plot of this movie is pretty much the plot of Saw Two, uh, like with the criminals being locked in the house. And uh, I think that came out a year earlier, but. Like I said, to be fair, it's not like, you know, they were trying to revolutionize anything when they made this film. Um, honestly, I think that you can also say the plot's a lot like Halloween Resurrection and House on Haunted Hill as well. But I think it's pretty spot on with uh, with Saul, too, and using the whole criminals aspect and whatnot. Um, yeah, Williams, I thought, looked a lot like Dolph Lundgren in the scene, by the way, till he was uh, <clears throat> disarmed. <clears throat> oh, my God. <laughs> Hey, hey, I'll catch y'all next time. <laughs> <laughs> what? What did I say? All right. Uh, All right. Anyway, uh, anyway. Okay. So uh, it is it, uh, it is a little uh, odd that he, he's left alive, though. You know, Good Night could have easily killed him, which let me talk about this name a little bit. I know it's never mentioned in the name, but Jacob Good Night, I think it's awful name. Um, Cain is a much better name. And I also wish they would have put the mask on him, which is very weird me to say, being you know that he wears he wears a mask you know halfway through t- half the time in WWE. But I really I missed the mask. This was almost like if Jason would have not had the mask the whole movie, I missed it. it let's just I will say that. Um, I really think that was good cinematography where it had the whole shot going into like her missing eye. I thought that was really cool. Um, which it, you know they have a lot of good CG in this movie, which kind of the ending, like I said, kind of like surprises me how bad yeah. that was. But um, uh, what? Oh, Rachel Taylor, known for playing Maggie in Transformers. And I will say, Michael Pegler, I, 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 the whole time, I hate this dude, but I think that he looks just like a discount skinny J- Jason Statham, like this whole movie to me, too. Um, the, last <laughs> little, the last little nitpick I have is that, you know, we have one cop there to watch all of these criminals, which, by the way, all look like they came off the set of Say by the Bell or 902 I know back then and not at all look like criminals by any means i mean i mean and i, and I know slashers you know tend to do that but at least that's you know like at a camp or sorority or something like that where it's at least a little bit believable but i mean these kids have full makeup rings hair stylists like yep. they don't even have prison outfits on right that was that's so that's a little nitpick i had about the little first group but i just wanted you to hear the disarmed joke <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I give it uh, I give it the joke. I'll say a six point seven five. Um, <laughs> okay, not bad, not bad. I'll take it. I thought the discount Jason Statham was better, to be honest. But go ahead, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, I tend to agree with pretty much a lot of what Brian said there, especially the part about the opening scene being very Saw-like. Very, you know, just kind of the way they decided to, like, give me a backstory. And I'll be honest, that little – the backstory on the first initial killings that we do get, I don't really care about that much. Like, I'm more interested in – once we get to the prison scenes and on the bus and stuff. I do agree with you, though. I don't know what kind of prisoners these people are or, you know, whatever, but they're full outfits, full, like they just got them off the street and stuff. So that was kind of weird for me. Um, but that being said, Christina Vidal, call me sometime. Rachel Taylor, call me sometime. So I had to get it out of the way, go there with it. So, okay. I'm not a big fan of the Jacob Goodnight name either. And I honestly, as weird as this is, I would have, n- I would not have minded if they went with the name Kane. It would have been a little over the top. Like I know they didn't like want to go like this is Kane, the wrestling character, so they didn't want to confuse the two. Like I understand that, but it would have been a little bit of a creepier thing. Maybe worse, some kind of variation of a mask. It doesn't have to be the Kane mask or one of the Kane mask, but something would have made him a little creepier. But to me, yeah. he still plays this part well. Like I will say, I think Glenn Jacobs does a good job. Mm-hmm. As this character, I, I have no – hell, he's the best part of the movie in my opinion. Like he makes a really good horror villain. Uh, so props to him for that. And, <laughs> you know, this house becoming a homeless shelter is not very believable to me. Like this house is a – even for a homeless shelter, is a piece of dog shit. So I didn't buy that for a second. I feel like the old woman just brought them here to be murdered. So, you know, homeless shelter my ass. Poor little Kane. Sorry. Well, I had to get my – I had to get my Paul Bear line in. <laughs> well, plus Kane could have went with the whole biblical theme that they were had going on. Yes. The whole, yeah. You know, yeah. I, and 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 by the way, he could have he would have played an amazing Jason Voorhees at any point. Oh, absolutely, there. absolutely. Yeah. He basically plays a, yeah. a he basically plays Jason Voorhees a little bit in this movie, and I kind of get that vibe. Yeah. But like you said, they do borrow from a bunch of different horror franchises in this movie, and I don't necessarily think that hurts the movie. I actually think it kind of like helps it for me because i can be like oh that's from a or oh that's from you know like i can kind of see a lot of similarities with some other franchises so as far as the scenes there's some good cinematography work like you said through the eye but the direction okay some of the way they shoot these kills and i there's one in particular that i that i'm going to mention later that i don't like i don't know if that's the the editing or that's the director but some of the the way they shoot these kills really just takes it takes me out it's like a little jump flash cuts and i'm not a big fan of that but i'll wait till one kill in particular to get to that but i'm still invested in the movie not a bad little you know not a bad little start yeah and to to speak to your point mike about them wanting to separate it and not build it as this is a wrestler i mean he was billed as kane in this film he's not billed as glenn jacobs he's billed as well yeah so right um and to your point uh, Brian, about the mask, this movie came out three years after he was unmasked on yes. WWE yes. Raw. So, I mean, how how can you have him put the mask back on? But anyway. <laughs> I have him wear um, a face I shield in the sequel. I missed the mask. I missed the mask. Hey, <laughs> that's, hey. That's fair. And they have him wear a face shield in the sequel. He was ahead of his time. Everyone has to wear a mask now, pal. <laughs> oh, my God. So, <laughs> so when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to these scenes, uh, you know, it, it. I like how they didn't waste any time. I mean – we got a kill and an arm cut off and a chick with no eyes in the first five minutes. And the way that the camera went into the eye socket, I thought was very well done. Mm -hmm. Like that's some top notch CG that holds up to this day. A lot of times, you know, something that's done 15 years ago, uh, it it may not hold up as well, but that was, that was well done. I rewatched it today and I was like, Oh Jesus, that's gross. Um, Great use of David Banner. Shout out to David Banner. Getting the song in the on the soundtrack, I was a big fan of that. Uh, some of the dialogue was just flat out bad. And the thing about this is, it, it just didn't seem like it was natural conversational. And so I don't know if that's bad writing. I don't know if it's bad acting. It could be a mixture of both. But to me, that was uh, a, a big turnoff on the on the bus scene. One thing about the bus scene, that whole all the bus scenes when they're on the bus scenes moving. Those were all uh, done in front of a green screen, which, again, is very well done because you would not have picked up on that 
that looked real. So uh, shout out to them for that. Uh, the next thing, uh, you know, Margaret's creepy as fuck. Like, I'll just get that out of the way. Margaret, uh, as soon as you see her, to me, if you know that this is a horror movie, having a creepy ass old lady like that, I knew she was going to be shady the first time I watched it, like something's off with her. And she just didn't have that sweet, innocent old lady uh, believability to her. And one she's, more almost, thing I, she's almost a better Pamela Voorhees than Pamela Voorhees was, to be honest. Well, let's not get crazy here. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, uh, you know, I, I really like the, these first scenes. I, I do have my I do have my issues with it, of course, uh, my little nitpicks, which you guys picked up on most of those. But. Basically, Christina Vidal, she really saved it because the whole time I'm watching her, my heart was skating and I was on the brink of confessing my love. See, that's a joke because she was in a rollerblading movie called Brink back in the 90s. Shout out to me for the dad joke. What's up? We both got one. I hate it here. This may be the highest rated show we had so far. Right? We got him hook, line, and sinker. Oh, disarm. That's a fishing joke. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, now Michael, he starts to. Ha- I wrote he starts to half-ass mop the bathroom, <laughs> but dust from the ceiling keeps falling on him. And then we get uh, an eye looks through a peephole at him. Kyra pulls Christine into a room to show her the escape she had planned. It only leads to another part of the hotel though. Kyra starts bitching more about Michael. Uh, Officer Frank walks in and gets a cigarette from Kyra. Don't burn the place down, he says, as he exits. Richie tells Tyson it's true about the secret tunnels and safe in the hotel. Richie wants Tyson to crack open the safe, and Tyson says he's down to help. Frank tells Christine she has the most potential of the group, and then she asks him who put Kyra and Michael in the same you know, uh, community project or community service. He says he'll handle it and, and watch her. And now the group is together eating lunch. I guess uh, Melissa offers a stray dog some food, but Michael throws a can at it, and it scares it real bad. Uh, Zoe wants the drugs Michael has. Uh, Kyra's in the shower, enjoying the hell out of it, because she makes some really weird faces taking the shower. (laughs) Uh, But she doesn't know she's being watched. Michael walks in and starts to choke her, and then Christine stops him from choking her. Richie and Tyson get to the room they think has a safe, and Melissa is getting dolled up for Russell. And then Melissa and Zoe leave. They're about to go hang out with everybody. All right, that's the next two scenes I got wrote. Dustin, you want to go next, man? Yeah, sure. I'll go ahead and knock these out. Um, so some of the setting, to me, is a little bit overboard cliche. Like you guys said, they, they borrow from a lot of movies. This is like when you look up horror movies 101, what's the easiest way to make something creepy as fuck? You just flood the room with roaches and rats. There's nothing in this world other than paranormal activity demons that I'm afraid of other than rats. I'll just be 100% honest with you. I, bro, I picked up a, bro, I'm terrified of mice and rats. <laughs> dude, okay, me too. So there was a black widow spider in my basement not, like a few months ago, and I picked it up by the leg and took it outside. Like, I don't care about spiders, snakes, none of that. But you let a mice, a mouse, get in the same vicinity of me, then you're going to see some social distancing because I'm going to punt that motherfucker. But anyway, uh, that being said, that's a little side tangent. That's a little bit overboard, though, how the camera kept flashing to the rats. I don't think a rat running across the screen subtly is a problem, but the way the camera kept panning to the bugs and the mice, like, it's just a little bit overkill for me. Uh, but the lighting in the film is perfect. Like like you guys said, it's in the same era of that, you know, Saw, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and the way that this film is shot, it really does a good job of setting the tone. Uh, why the fuck did he put the mop in the toilet? Like, other than just to be a douchebag? Who? He's, he's anyway, <laughs> I, I hated him as a character, yes. but uh, you know there, there's a there's a plunger that goes in the toilet guy, not the mop. Um, there's a stupid uh, jump scare that bothered me, like just the nitpick when Kira pulls Christine into the room to smoke the cigarette. Like I hate it. It's it's unnecessary. Jacob Goodnight scares the fuck out of people. The whole movie, you don't have to do that part. Um, it was really creepy as hell when Williams told Christina that she had the most potential. Like the way he just walked up and watches her, it's almost like, damn, bro, he <laughs> trying to get you some. Like, come on, that, that, that was just creepy and uncomfortable to me. But then also, I will say that he is a worse cop than Dewey because how oh the hell did he God. not know? How the hell did he not know that Kira and Michael had a past? 
and you're gonna put them on the same in the same hotel That's for three true. days. That is terrible police work. Dewey would never. Um, he didn't check on his own sister. Anyway. Hey, low blow. And then another <laughs> thing. This is probably the most unrealistic part of the movie to me. How many cross tattoos can one person have? Because they're all different styles and weird locations, different sizes. I know people with cross tattoos, religious <laughs> tattoos. I know no one that has one that takes up her their entire back, one on the wrist, and one on their arm, uh, bicep. Get that. That was... That was weird. As well. That's not realistic. <laughs> I will say that I enjoyed seeing her tattoos, but go ahead, Brian. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Williams, man, I know at this point you're supposed to be relating as an audience to him, but goddamn, he is very unlikable. Am I supposed to like him? Because I absolutely do not. But uh, that's my and and you know what? That's my biggest problem here. Spoiler alert. The main basically fucking hero is a woman beaten piece of shit in Michael. We even get to, sh- you know, get him show that off like in this shower scene or whatever. And I don't know of another character I've hated much more than uh, than this dude. And I don't know if I'm supposed to hate him. So, like, that's what is is just crazy about this. But all the, you know, all the women characters I actually really like in this film and Tyson, all better choices for the hero at the end than you know, than Michael was. And the, the last thing I've got to say is Williams. This motherfucker's fake hand. <laughs> I, can't, I can't help but thinking of Chubbs from Happy Gilmore. That damn alligator popped up and bit my hand off. Cut it into my prime. The whole damn time I was watching that. Anyway, that's all I had. It was, it was funny when he smacked Michael in the back of the head with it. Like, I got to – because it made a great thud sound. Yes, and it did. And then uh, when, <laughs> when Christina and Kira were like, do you think he wax off of that thing? Definitely. Like, that made me laugh too, but – and that, that's that's a terrible thing to laugh at because that's a horrible disability that I wouldn't ever make fun of. But it was just a funny line in the moment. No, 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 man. Fuck that. That shit was hilarious. What are you talking about? <laughs> Don't apologize. He, he had to whack off with a fake hand. That's something else. Um, uh, the, I, that takes stranger in the bedroom to a whole new level. So, wh- OK, <laughs> by the way, the mop always makes me laugh. Every time I watch this movie, because we know he's moving shit water around, like, this mop's not doing a damn bit of anything. Yeah. So, that always makes me giggle. I actually like the interaction with Christine and Kira. I'm a fan of that. Just, I'm not, like, like nothing in particular, but I do, like, I could see them being believable friends, or, or at least, like, you know, acquaintances or whatever. So, I like that. Uh, then we get to Richie and Tyson. Man, I would not agree to go on this fucking... I would not agree to go look for anything in this fucking house. Nope. I'm staying here. I'm sweeping the floor. Fuck this place. I'm not doing it. So that really like kind of took me out a little bit. Shower scene. Thumbs up. I mean, we don't get a lot of nudity in this movie. Kind of good. That's a good thing. However, we get the backside and the backside's always nice. So, you know, <laughs> it's whatever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's pretty much all I, I was going to say something about the fake hand too, but since you guys already touched on it, I also think of Chubbs because anytime there's a fake hand in a movie, I think of f- fucking Chubbs and the alligator and Happy Gilmore always pops up somehow. So, yep. Real sturdy. <laughs> Made of wood. <laughs> hey, I, I, will, uh, I did pop it. Do you think he whacks off with that thing? That is fucking great. <laughs> I do have one more thing about what you just said. So the, the chemistry they had uh, with Christy and, and Kira, like that, their, that moment they had the conversation. Yeah. They actually were real life friends, and they actually uh, shared sense. an apartment together for for a long time. So they were real life, real good friends. So that chemistry you saw was natural. So you're saying she took Christina Vidal to the brink? I only like, that joke, pal. Only li- I know. Only like four <laughs> people will get that reference, but that's okay. <laughs> that's a Disney movie for you. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to get technical, I'll. All Jacob had to do to catch her is throw some gravel out in the walkway. Oh. Oh. By the way, we're excluding like majority of the audience here. Brink There's was a nobody that's listening. Uh, to Brink was a Disney Channel original movie that came out in 1998, starring Christina Vidal. So. <laughs> and it's available on Disney Plus. I recommend you watch it. Me too. <laughs> when you woke up this morning, did you say today I'm going to talk or today <laughs> I'm going to skate? You're going to skate. That's what you're going to do. All right, go ahead. Sorry, Nico. You're off the rails. Hey, Brian, we just got a fun fact and a Disney Plus plug and back to back. It was amazing. Fine to us, even, Disney. They're not even paying us for it. <laughs> True. Uh, uh, Frank and – I don't even know where to go now. Uh, uh, Frank and <laughs> Hannah, they share a drink, and they talk about her being proposed to. 
Uh, Richie and Tyson, they find a somewhat fresh corpse with no eyes in it. Richie runs off, and then we finally see Jacob Goodnight. Jacob grabs him uh, with a chain and hook and drags him into the elevator. And Tyson is horrified. Margaret tells the two officers someone is in the elevator, so Hannah goes to look. She enters the elevator, and it takes her to the eighth floor. Jacob enters the elevator and slams her down. He then pulls her eye out with his fingers, and he keeps it in a jar. Michael, Zoe, Russell, and Melissa, they wander off. Christine consoles uh, Kira and talk about a possible escape as Jacob looks in their room. Christine hugs uh, Kyra as she attempts to escape through the kitchen window. She tries to escape, and but she falls off the you know the the cabinet or whatever. Uh, Margaret and Frank head towards the kitchen as they hear the crash. The dumbwaiter opens and uh, Kyra thinks it's just Michael stalking her still, but she slips on a piece of glass and then Jacob hooks her and pulls her in. Frank, Margaret, and Christine see her pulled in. Frank and Christine run to the elevator. He has Margaret call 911. They head to the penthouse to find the others, and then we see blood drip on Christine's arm from the elevator ceiling. That's the next two scenes I got. Mike, you want to go first, man? Yeah, so as far as these guys finding the corpse, the the one dumbass says, oh, it must have been from the fire, as clearly this guy's only been there for like two seconds. Like, <laughs> and I know he like brings it up in the movie, but God, that's the first thing I think of. Like, no, dumbass, he didn't get burnt in the fire 30 years ago. Anyway, um, okay. So I really like the hook as a weapon for this movie, for this villain in particular. Like, I'm a big fan of that. It's different enough to where it's – it's it's very slasher esque and we get that, but it's different enough from the machete, the you know the the butcher knife and all that stuff. It sets it apart. I do like the hook as a as a weapon. Um, I'm not a big fan of the way they shoot these kills though. In particular, the first hook kill. It's it's like it, it, it's almost like done with a strobe light or something. Like I I I'm not a big fan of it. It's just just show the kill. Like just just shoot the kill like you would normally do in a slasher movie. I feel like they like we mentioned at the top here, they put a bunch of different styles that were popular at the time, and they put it all in one movie. Yeah, and yeah, that yeah. definitely shows what the way they shoot the kills, at least in my opinion. The elevator kill is kind of a boner killer because there's a lot of potential there with an elevator kill, and I thought it was lame as fuck, to be quite frank. I, I like the fact that he takes the eyeballs of his victims. That's unique. That's cool. See no evil. That's kind of fun. So, again, there's some stuff that I like here, but I'm not – Maybe it's the post-production. Maybe that's the reason that it was shot that way. I don't know. But I'm not a fan of that, of the way they shoot these kills at all. But um, I'm still – again, props to Glenn Jacobs, Kane, whoever the fuck, because he is a believable-ass <laughs> monster villain in this role. And these scenes in particular really – it took us forever to get here, by the way. I'm not a fan of that. It took a little too long to get to actually see Jacob Goodnight. But once we get him in the movie, the movie kind of – ratchets up a little bit and and i like it so um i like these scenes but i would have shot the kills completely different his uh his weapon should have been a steel chair to be honest uh go ahead brian (laughs) (laughs) well good i mean his first appearance was very reminiscent to me of leatherface in that texas chainsaw remake but i thought it was very well done too um again you know you talked about the the strobe lights well the fast editing to me i saw was all i thought about but i thought the whole sequence was really very well done um i just needed kane's damn mask but anyway um that you know i mean you talked about his weapon i mean i know that candy man did the whole hook thing but him throwing the hook i really honestly i thought that was really good and you know i don't want to steal anybody's fast fact but you know that that was supposed to be cg and based on the ending cg I'm so glad they did yes. not do that. Thank God that Glenn Jacobs was so like proficient with it and you know was just really good at the hook and fucking throwing it and uh, hooking people that they didn't have to do CG, thankfully, because I think that – honestly, I think a CG hook would have stood out 15 years later, and I'm glad they didn't use it. Um, one nitpick I had was the elevator kill because, I mean, where the hell did it even come from? I mean, how did he get in that elevator? Because it showed like the hallway at all angles – and then his arm like coming around the corner, and then bam, he's inside the elevator. The next shot. So I thought I think that's a little bit of an editing mess up, but but I thought it was a great kill. Um, I am going to need a little bit more blood the next time eyes get ripped out. But overall, I thought it was really great. And I will say the last thing I'll say about this whole group and this whole movie in particular, right right now, I think is I think it's got really good pacing. Like it's a you know it's a typical slasher film, but I think that this film's got really good pacing, and I think that makes it 
you know, the easy watch that we were talking about earlier. Yep, I agree. So um, one nitpick that I had, of course, the the whole uh, that buddy must be here from the fire. Yeah, that pissed me off. But at the same time, what, what pissed me off equally as much was Richie just taking off in the opposite direction of which they were walking. <laughs> because they they've already said multiple times how it's easy to get lost in the hotel. It's a uh, it's like a maze in there, blah blah blah. So you're gonna run in in you know the opposite direction where you don't know what lies ahead. Like that that's that was irritating to me, idiot. And then we get our first <laughs> when we get our first glimpse glimpse of Kane. I mean he's scary as fuck as a person. Yeah, I agree. Like he is he is cartoonishly huge, and despite being uh, like a super nice guy in real life. He looks like a villain. So the fact that, you know, this is his natural look, I know he probably had, you know, makeup for, for camera effects and everything, but no real prosthetics and no makeup and everything like in that regard. Like he's a he's a he's a believable slasher. Uh, he looks like someone that would kill you. Um, no offense, Glenn. I, I love you. Uh, the way he ragdolls Hannah was funny, but also impressive and believable because he's so large and, and strong. Yeah. Uh, he. And one of the things that stuck out to me about that scene was when, you know, they're sitting down there and Patterson's like, why is your ring on your right hand? He goes, I'm test driving it. I haven't said yes yet. And then they show her hand after he killed her and she had moved it to the left hand. Oh, man, that'll play with your heartstrings. She was going to tell him <laughs> yes. Oh, and, well, well, shit. I mean, <laughs> you know, in the, in the earlier draft, like they had her pregnant. Yeah. So I'm glad, yeah. they, I'm glad they went with the wedding thing instead yeah. of the being pregnant thing. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, never mind, I'm not going to say that. Uh, the next thing is <laughs> when Kira's in the kitchen and she's she's running when the dumbwaiter opens and she slips on the spatula or whatever it was. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> like, that was straight out of Scooby-Doo. Someone trying to get away and they slip on a fucking spatula. It's like they're playing Mario Kart and someone throws a banana peel. Like, the way she went down. <laughs> I laugh every time I see that. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I agree with you. The pacing's good. The lighting is... Uh, on the kills may be a little troubling, but the lighting overall and the mood of the yeah. film... I, I like and I, I'm I'm a fan of. I can see what you're saying, Brian, about needing more blood. And I think we get blood in certain parts. It's, it's like they pick and choose. So, yeah. right. uh, which is which is interesting because some of the some of the you know, bodies when they go back and show with no eyes, there's a shit ton of blood. <laughs> so I, I don't know, but overall, uh, decent scenes here. Oh yeah. Uh <laughs> I'll see if Dustin laughs at this. Michael starts whacking everything with a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> but did he whack Dick? That is the question. Come on, uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Christine and off the officer Frank, they the two get to the eighth floor. Tyson hears an elevator open and links up with uh, Frank and Christine. He describes Jacob and Frank can't believe it. It's it's the same guy who he shot four years ago. They think Jacob is keeping Kyra because of her tattoos. I, I love how they just hypothesize that all so easily. He goes to find, they go to find Kyra, but officer, he gets hooked right in the bottom of his throat or the bottom of his chin in his throat and he's pulled up and killed. And then Christine really slowly walks to his body and takes his gun and she and Tyson run off. The other four make it to the penthouse and start to smoke. We see, we see Kyra bound now. Zoe says you could do better to Michael. They're being watched by Jacob through a two-way mirror. Russell and Melissa, they, you know, they, you know, they leave to be alone. Jacob touches all of Kyra's tattoos and then hits her head on the wall as they leave. Now, I don't know how this girl's like knocked out in this movie because she gets banged a lot. Right. T E definitely. Oh, she has it, no doubt. <laughs> Russell and Melissa find a bed to have coitus on. Kyra is now in a cage in Jacob's coitus. torture room. <laughs> Shout out. To Shout out to the Big Bang Theory. Yeah, Sheldon Cooper right there. We are so mature on this show. I tell you what. Of all the she words I expected all the other to hear on this podcast, that's not one of them. <laughs> Whack dick and coitus in the toes. last two minutes. Just saying. <laughs> she sees all the other bodies and she starts crying for help. Jacob walks in and stares at her in the cage. And Richie squirms. And, it, you know, Richie's not dead yet. He's still strapped up in the in this torture room. And he starts squirming in his straps, and then uh, Jacob pulls his eyes out. Was, that was pretty intense for my guy, Richie. 
Now, my, Michael tries this sauce on Zoe, but she shoots him down. And then Zoe gets a call from her sister. She stole Hannah's phone earlier on the bus. Jacob pulls Kyra out the cage and presses her to the wall. And then he holds her face underwater to wash the sands out of her eyes like his mom did to him. Then he stares at her tattoo. The bed Russell and Melissa are on are connected to Bell's. And it lets them know it lets him know that, you know, they're on the bed or whatever. Uh, then they, uh, Melissa notices something up with this mirror and they look through the mirror and they see Jacob Goodnight. They run off when his shadow appears. They hide in the closet. He wants, he wants him to escape through a window. He ties a, like a fire hose around Melissa's waist and he lowers her down. Then all of a sudden she starts getting pulled back up. It's Jacob. The hose falls, you know, like down her waist to her ankles and she hits her head on the wall. She yells, let me go. So Jacob Goodnight does that and he drops her. She falls through like this glass ceiling and breaks her arm on the ground like her bone pops out of her forearm and she hangs over the floor. And then the stray dog from earlier comes out and licks the blood and then he starts barking and several other stray dogs come out and start to eat her. And then we just see Jacob real quick uh, pull Russell's eyes out. Brian, do you want to go first, man? <laughs> sure. Um, man, can you imagine Michael Myers or Freddy or Jason giving a shit about your tattoos? I mean, who, I think that's honestly, I think that's a bad, bad plot point. But it, but goddamn, they hammer it home way too much, I think. And but, you know, then again, you can dress up like Pamela and Jason will leave you alone or shave your head like, you know, he looked as a kid. So I guess I can forgive it a little bit, but still. Um, and how do they even know Kira is alive, by the way? Um, did yeah. I either miss something, but they didn't actually see her be taken. Um, so did I miss that? Like, why are they assuming she's alive and Richie, for example, is dead? So I don't really understand why the whole time they're looking for her, like assuming that she's still alive. And I didn't really understand why. Um, great kill Candyman style from a man, Chubbs Peterson. Um, <laughs> but you know, o officer Williams dying. Okay. That's fine. You know what? I like that. You, you, uh, you had the balls, you know, cause you made me as an audience think that he was going to be the main character and the hero. And I empathize with him and then bam, he dies. So, so i like that. I give you props, but the problem here that's left is that there's nobody else that you really like, you know, like I said, um, well, you know, that, that stays alive anyway. Um, Tyson giving Christine shit, asking what the hell, you know, she's doing as she's trying to get his gun. How about being the only smart person in a fucking horror movie going for his gun? Like, that's why. Why are you even questioning that? Because, you know, I questioned where the gun was later, but I, I think that was great. Of course, it, of course, you would go for his gun right there. Um, right. Uh, but another question I had was, why does he have Kira and or Kira, whatever, how you say it? And. And she still has eyes because of the girl at the beginning of the movie. I mean, he took and kept he still took her eyes. So maybe maybe because he washed them out first or something. I, I don't I don't know. I disinfected them first that uh, he, let, he let her keep them. I don't know. But uh, again, I will say it's an interesting third act. Um, great pacing. Um, I like having his backstory, the whole angry religious mother, you know, basically kind of like Carrie. But uh, and I will say he spent some mad time rigging up all those beds in the hotel with with bells. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but hell, oh nine Jason did the same thing through the camp, yep. so maybe they yep. stole it from maybe they stole it from this movie because uh, um, maybe they were the original ones out here. Um, also, you know, he busted. Speaking of other things, it reminded me of stuff he busted out of the mirror, just like in Halloween Resurrection. And uh, the last thing is, I like that Russell and Melissa sequence. Um, I thought it was great tension built up, you know, not knowing who had the fire hose and the whole heartbeat soundtrack and whatnot. I just don't really like Melissa's kill. Um. I thought great kill hitting her head on the ground. That's that's what I said at first, but then I realized it wasn't her head and she isn't dead. And then the dog eats her. I thought he was trying to do too much. I mean, I understand it was kind of irony with her defending the dog at the beginning. And then, you know, you have her eaten by the dog, which is kind of ironic, but I would have rather hit her head and die on the concrete though. That, that's what I would have rather seen in there. Go ahead, Dustin. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. Uh, so, but going back to, from the, from the top of these scenes, I agree. How the hell did he know that it was Jacob just by saying there's a guy with a hole in his head? Like, that's the, the only other clues that he gave were that the guy was huge and he had a long chain. But the last time he saw Jacob, he was, he, you know, chopped his arm off with an axe and killed his partner with an axe. He didn't have a chain. Right. So to me, that's lazy writing. Uh, he just, the way that he, uh, you know, was able to jump to that conclusion based on the information he was given. That's lazy writing that I think that really detracted from these scenes. Um, you could have 
done it a different way, like either give more description or William sees him, sees a glimpse of him in another room. I don't know. Could have been done differently. Uh, the way that Williams was pulled up and killed, I thought that was well done, though. I, I, I like the way he just kind of fished him out of the hallway there. That was yep. a cool shot, cool kill. And there's what I was talking about earlier. So when they show Williams' face after the fact, he's got blood like all over his face. That's, that's I think, a probably a believable amount of blood. I don't know. Never had no. my eyes pulled out. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the way Jacob watched her and rubbed her tattoos and then the way he rubs one out later i mean it's very perverse and creepy as fuck it just right. really drives home which i think it does a great job of tying back the uh the, the backstory because you know his mother's like uh look at the horrors see the sin see the sin in their eyes blah blah i saw what you were doing in there you know really guilt tripping him for having sexual thoughts when well, it's clear he's a deranged individual that gets off on sexuals like weird kinky shit um <laughs> I think that Zoe is just as big of a douchebag as Michael. I know that she's not a woman beater, so he takes the title because right. of that. But God, I hated her character. Ugh. Like, just from the beginning of the film all the way through, she sucks, but she's beautiful, so we let it slide. I hated the way, too, that, like you said earlier in the film, like the shoes that she's wearing, uh, you know. They, they did tell him they were going to clean up this nasty-ass hotel, right? And she's wearing high heels. She's wearing sunglasses inside earlier in the film. It's just everything about her irked me more than other characters. Um, I did love the fact that Russell's kill... This is a rare occurrence. I love the fact that his kill was off-screen. Because and she's dangling down, she's being lowered down, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden she's being pulled up. It builds that suspense better because you're like, oh shit, she's going up now. And so I think that if they'd have showed that kill, it would have taken away from that's her fair. demise. Yeah. And so that's the one occasion that, that I can think of that an off-screen kill works is because it, it really set the, the suspense for her demise. And, yeah, I hated how, like you said, how it was the dogs that took her out. Um, it was good effects, though, when they lowered it down and like it showed her wrist snapping and the yeah. bone coming through the skin. Like, I thought that was that was well done, uh, you know, special effects wise. And I get it. Like you said, there's irony there. I had the same thing. Like, it's ironic how she was taken up for the dogs and then it's dog eat dog world. So, um, <laughs> oh, God damn it. What is it with you two? <laughs> this is going to be the highest rated show. I'm saying it again. <laughs> but, yeah, that's all I got on those scenes, though. So I'll pass it off to Mike. See, see if you can top that, pal. I can't because I'll I'll be honest. This collection of scenes, I'm. I'm not invested. Like, I watched this movie twice in the last two days, so once each day. And this set of scenes right here has some good kills. Like, there's a, like, like you said, the wrist snapping, the effects, all that is good. And I do agree with you about the off-screen part of it. But some of this is where I think Nico was talking. Well, maybe he he doesn't agree with me here, but this is some of the filler. When you said, I disagree, there is filler, some of this right here is filler. Michael and Zoe, filler, don't care about what's going on there. Even though yeah. you are right, they are assholes, and it makes me hate them, I, I, I really don't care. Like It kind of takes away from what else is going on, in my opinion. Some of the sex stuff, and I know how I come across on this show, but even some of the sex stuff is just kind of... <laughs> It's just kind of bad to me. Like, I don't necessarily need it in this movie. And I know it's very slasher-esque, especially in 2006, to have some sexy time and all that's, you know, that's fine. But a lot of this is just filler to me, except for the kills. Like, there's some good kills here. Um, again, I'm also, I want more blood from the eyes being pulled out. Like, I, I, I've i complained about that ever since the first time I saw this movie. I feel like you could have went a little bit more gore there. Not, like, hostile gore or anything, but... I guess you make a good point. I don't. I've never pulled an eye out, so I don't know how much blood goes into that. But I, I, I have to think there's more to it. But you're right. I'm a big fan of the way that how they have the wrist snap on the glass and all that stuff. But like you said, the the dogs ended up being the killer, and that that doesn't really do anything for me. So this like this is just kind of filler. I like what we have coming up here, kind of. But I. I mean, this section of the scenes is just kind of there for me. Like, I, I don't have, like, I don't have anything positive or negative. They're just kind of there, man. Like, this is the filler part of the movie to me. 
<laughs> he said he said I'm aware of how I come across on this show. <laughs> hey, I had to hey, I know my reputation, just say. <laughs> Zoe and Michael, they go to look for an elevator. And when they get to it and the door opens, a bunch of flies come out. And then Michael attacks Jacob uh, with that pipe. He grabs Zoe and they run off and hide in the room. Jacob can't find them at first. And then he walks out. And then that's when Zoe's phone rings. Jacob finds Zoe in the closet and kills her by shoving the phone down her throat. He has flashbacks as a child. He drags her out of the room. Christine <laughs> shoots at Michael by accident as he comes around the hallway. They attract... They attack Jacob with another. Uh, they attract Jacob with another trip wire bill. They wait on the elevator, but nothing is in there. Jacob breaks through the wall behind them. Jacob bashes Michael's head into the wall and then throws him into a mirror. He hits the elevator controls with an axe. He chops uh, into like the elevator doors now, and then Tyson stunts his hand as they escape through the elevator roof. Christine calls for Kyra as they break into a room where they hear a scream. Tyson finds the money Richie spoke of. They find Kyra in the cage. They can't get the cage open, so they hide when they hear Jacob. He starts to touch himself as he looks at Kyra. Flashback to him as a kid in the cage. He gets the key to let her out, but hears, you know, some, like, glass jar shattering. Christine sneaks back in to let Kyra free, but Jacob took the keys with him. Jacob finds Tyson behind the safe through his uh, sense of smell. He sticks the stun gun into Tyson's throat and then crushes him with the safe. The door opens, and it's Margaret. Jacob walks in behind her. Why is that whore still alive? She asks him. Jacob is Margaret's son. Margaret set this all up to get revenge on Frank. She pulls Jacob to the cage and tells him to judge her, and he yells no. And the next two scenes are the ending. Uh, Mike, you want to go first on that, man? Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, Dustin already kind of touched on the whole Jacob Goodnight touching himself. Fucking weird. Like, I don't know. Like, it... it I got it was, what he was unnecessary. It, I mean, yeah. It really... it, so to me, I, I don't need Jacob Goodnight to be Norman Bates. Like it's just not really what. I, well, I mean, Norman Bates in the remake of Psycho, and I do mean remake, shot for shot. Terrible fucking decision. Anyway, so I didn't need that. Not a fan of that. Uh, I, I get that it ties into the backstory, and that's true what Dustin said, but it's just not for me. Um, <sighs> This is where this movie starts to get a little frustrating to me and a little bit of a a, a like – like I'm kind of – bored's not the right word, but I feel like even in this short runtime, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like really digging it. So again, all I can really think of is Kane masturbating. That's where I get that, – that's what I get from these scenes. It's fucking weird. Zoe – like the Zoe and Michael scene, I'm – um, I, I, I do like that. I do like the phone being shoved down the throat. That was kind of cool. It's of mm-hmm. its time. It, it's probably going to date itself at some point, but for now, still pretty relevant. Still kind of cool. I like that. Um, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's pretty much all I have, man. That's pretty much all I got for this. <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, you talk about that cell phone thing, Zoe's death, but you know, I complained about the whole pretty much this whole time about this movie kind of ripping off other horror movies. But this right here, I've got to give it credit. To me, this is a most original as hell kill. Yeah. I don't think I've ever yes. seen I don't think I've ever seen anybody get killed by a cell phone being thrown shoved down their throat. So I thought that was I like great. That. And yeah, then me too. But <laughs> then you get Michael, you know, saying, Oh, fuck old Zoe and just took off and left her. But uh I I, I like the scene with Tyson and Christine in the elevator. Um, and the elevator, you know, fun fact, you know, they took the time to remove all the eyes from every bill on the wall and that whole Mason jar eye room. Um, but you know, this is what I was talking about earlier. Like what the hell happened to the gun that Tyson and Christine had, Like, Christine was running and, and I, I thought, okay, well, Tyson must have the gun and he had a stun gun, but he didn't have the regular gun. So, I mean, I know they didn't shoot all the bullets out of it. So I was wondering what the hell happened to that. Maybe I missed it. Um, yeah, I completely agree with Mike. I'm kind of, you know, the the whole beating off thing was super unnecessary, I think. Um, and I do think they could have come up with a better twist that yes. wasn't exactly like Friday the 13th. I mean, Williams doesn't even really do anything to him. And, like, you know, wh- what, I mean, if they if they didn't, what if they didn't give Williams this whole case, like this assignment? You know, maybe I would have liked to have seen something like a little, like showing them, like, 
rig Williams being, you know, assigned to this or something because all this whole exact whole setup would have been for not had Williams not have been assigned to this case. So I kind of thought that was a little bit, you know, convenient too. Um, and what I was talking about with the better twist with, was with obviously with what's her name being his mom and, and that sort of thing, just like Pamela and Jason. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I agree with, uh, with what a lot of you guys said um, there. The, the These scenes do lose the momentum that they mm-hmm. had built in the previous uh, couple of groups of scenes. But I, it did still have some good. Like you said, Zoe's death, I thought that was a really good death. Me too. Um, like you said, Brian, it was original, and it was also something that was uh, – it was it was well done from a from a uh, effect standpoint. My man Tyson deserved better. He was uh, yeah. a very likable character in this movie. Like He did not deserve to go out like he did. Uh, RIP to that man. Uh, I like how you know Margaret came in, and I like how she explained the why. I get it, um, how – I do wish it was, you know, kind of more original than just borrowing a, a finish. But here's the thing about professional wrestling, and WWE is a professional wrestling company. And that's true. That's true. Yeah, I know what you're saying. that's true. You don't you don't steal gimmicks. You call it a repackaging. And so it, you can you can recycle gimmicks and you can recycle ideas, but you just got to repackage it. And that's what they did in this film. So I, you know, take it for what it is, pal. It's a WWE Studios film. Everything uh, is wrestling. Everything. Everything is wrestling. R A S S L I N. That's wrestling. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do. Like I said, I do like her explaining the why because it made it made sense now. Like, okay, I see why she's wanting to kill Williams, and I like how she said you you guys were just bonuses or, or whatever it was. But yeah, Brian, you're right. How the fuck did she know that he was going to be the one that was going to be on that assignment? Like, what dumb luck that was, and mm-hmm. what would they have done had it been had he you know had the liquid shits that morning to, had to call into work? Like, would he <laughs> would he have still killed? All the kids and killed Hannah, or would he have staved off his thirst for blood until you know the next time he could get someone? So I thought that was a little bit unbelievable. Uh, the perversion thing was sick. The perversion angle with him, you know, rubbing one out over the pants, handy there. And uh, the, but I do, I, it is gross and unnecessary. But at the same time, I do like how it ties it back to his yeah. past. Like they show him in the cage, basically doing the same thing, and his mom catches him, which does a lot of job. You know, that that's the psychological abuse he grew up with. He had to live in a cage himself. He was right. rubbing one out, and his mom made him think that that is not what you do. Now you got to judge people. So I get the psychological backstory there, the the groundwork that was laid into mm-hmm. the development of the character. It's just uncomfortable to watch because you don't want to watch. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to watch another man rub one out. Um, I don't want to watch Kane masturbate ever. I gotta be yeah. honest. Pretty much anybody. That's I mean, somebody's yeah. fair, goddamn nope. it. Anybody, even King. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I'm gonna go down to his office with just a clip of that video and be like, I'm gonna post this on Twitter unless you do an interview. But uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that that's that's what I got on those scenes. Like I like I said, it it was kind of a uh, kind of a flat spot in what had otherwise been a uh, a very solid run of scenes. Hey, one more quick thing, Nico. The eyeball jars are very reminiscent of like 10 other movies that have eyeball jars. So I I know we've kind of hit this home a little bit, but man, does this movie like have Slasher's greatest hits. Like if they're like if Slasher movies had like a worldwide tour, this movie would, would, would basically be exactly what it is. Like especially around this time period where, you know, there's some eyeball jars in Hostel, Saw, there's like the nasty, you know, peroxide jars and stuff like that. Like there's just a lot of the same shit and it's a cool looking effect, but I don't, I don't know. Like it it just kept, it kept reminding me of other movies, not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just kind of the way this movie ends up. Oh yeah. It's basically Leatherface's uh, room in Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the two new ones. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) All right. This, these are the last two scenes guys. Uh, Margaret goes to shoot Kyra, but Jacob knocks a gun out of her hand. Uh, we get more flashbacks. We see Margaret rip out a bound woman's eye when uh, when Jacob was a young man. Jacob says, "I see it," and then throws his mom into a spike on the wall that pierces, you know, that punctures her eye. He opens the cage and pulls Kyra out. Christine grabs a gun and follows behind. 
she follows the Jesus loves the little children playing. You know, that music is playing again into a room. We see Jacob in a trance just rocking back and forth with Kyra held to like his stomach and waist area. Christine goes to shoot him, but there's no bullets. He snaps out of it and he grabs her by the throat. And then he holds both of both of them up, choking them. He throws Kyra on the ground and then Michael runs in, hitting him with the pipe. He then hits him in the leg with the axe. He hits him repeatedly with the pipe and then stabs his head with it. And we see like maggots coming out of it. And he runs out of the room. Jacob gets up and he pulls the axe out and pursues. Jacob walks into a room and they sneak up on him and attack. They think they've knocked him out the window, but of course not. He grabs Christine as he tries to climb back in, but Michael beats his hand with the pipe. He tries to climb back in, but Christine rams the pipe now into his eye. And then as Jacob falls, he's got this pipe in his eye, and, and he hits like the window sills. Uh, it gets hung up on one of the metal bars in the glass ceiling. And then if he falls to the ground, and he like gets stabbed with a bunch of spikes on the ground. And for some reason, it did that like zoom-in shot of his that his body is just showing like his heart and all that stuff getting stabbed by the spikes. Uh, Michael, he goes and gets the keys from uh, Margaret's body. Michael tells them he didn't want to walk out alone. And that's why he went back to help. I think it was uh, Kyra. I can't remember which one it was. Kyra and Christine said, you didn't have to come back. Why did you blah, blah, blah. That's the ending. Uh, Brian, do you want to go first, man? Sure. Um, you know, and I do like the fact that they kind of took that Friday the 13th twist with his mom and then like kind of turned it around here and had him kill her. I yeah. thought that was, I thought that was a nice little touch there, but, uh, God damn it. When he had Kira and Christine, I wanted the double choke slam Me so too. bad right there. Oh, I, know. I, I was know. like, this movie is absolutely just ridiculous. Let's embrace that shit. Give me a tombstone while we're at it, please. Just something. <laughs> Um, but you know, also Kira, a little nitpick, he got, she got hooked in that arm earlier and it shows literally no sign of that the rest of the movie, not even like a bloodstained shirt or nothing. Um, and I know it's reminiscent of Jason six, but maggots for brains. Look, I don't even care about the logistics of that. That is a very cool visual. <laughs> um, and, and when, and, but you know, when you were talking about earlier, uh, when his description of him to off to the officer or whatever, when he was in there, Tyson was describing him, and he said he had a hole in his head. But when Michael just opens up the back of his head there, there was no hole or anything. So I, I don't really know where I – th I think that might have been a mess up or else I just missed something somewhere. And I don't really – I haven't seen the sequel to this. I don't know how the hell you make a sequel to this. The ending seemed pretty damn final to me. I mean, he even had the dog pissing in the eye socket right before the credits. Um, so I don't – I don't. I don't know how you make an ending to that. Um, and I'm not even going to say anything else about the, the the bad CG. I think we've kind of touched on that a little bit. And uh, the last thing, you know, I get what they were trying to do with Michael, you know, and his redemption, you know, saving Kira. But if you want to do a good redemption, I think that he should have sacrificed himself to save her, not be the hero, and then say one last dick thing before he walks off the screen. I think he and Tyson honestly should have changed places, and I think he should have been the ending character. That's just my opinion i agree with, Mike. yeah i agree with that 100 percent. i would have swapped michael and tyson easy like that would have been a really easy thing to do i don't know why they went that direction but i i, I mean like you said the redemption story arc doesn't really work because he kind of just wanted to be the hero i'm not a big fan of that agree with you again i like that they took the basically the pan Ver, the pan Voorhees jr thing and flipped it on its head i enjoyed that that's a really smart and something else I will give credit in these last little bit right here. I think the acting by Glenn Jacobs is good. Like, I, this is very – like how just his physical presence, the intimidation, same thing with you, wanted a double choke slam. But that whole – you know, his acting within that scene and the physical violence that he brings is really well done. Or at least to me, I like the way they shoot that. Um, so I'm a big fan of, of some parts of the end. Again – I, you, we have to at least touch on the CGI here. So I like you cool with the maggots for brains and all that stuff. I like the way they take him out. I think that's good, but the CGI at the end when he's falling out of the window is, is absolutely horrendous. I don't know if they couldn't find a guy to like do his stunt or something, or they ran out of money or they ran out of time. I didn't look that up, but man, it is the drizzling shits and it doesn't age well. And you know, some of the other effects in this movie don't age well either. The eyeballs look like uh, classroom eyeballs or like gummy eyeballs that you get around Halloween. That you know, they don't look good either. So, I mean, there's some effects that don't age well, but overall, this CGI 
it takes me out of it, man. And and it's unfortunate because I like this ending scene. I like the acting. I like a lot. Um, but man, that CGI really is dog shit. And I hate to hit. I, I I I hate that because I do like the last probably ten minutes of this movie a lot. Like I think it yeah. ratchets up. It's real intense. I I this I like the backstory on. You know, him and the mom, where you can see into the past and how that leads up to him killing her. Big fan of that. And so there's a lot to like, but man, the CGI just brings it down a whole nother fucking level. And I know that's maybe a nit- a nitpick, but it really does do a lot of the negative for me. It is absolute dog shit. <laughs> yep, I agree. And I don't think it's a nitpick at all. I think it's a huge flaw. Um, I you know, you guys have touched on a lot of what I had. I, I really like how he stood up to his mom and said no, but it wasn't a redemption. Like, okay, let me snap out of it and be a good guy. Now it's like, no, just fuck you. I'm still going to do my thing. Right. I like that. Um, and, you know, for a guy who had four lines in the entire movie, man, he acted his ass off in this last scene. Like the emotion that he conveys, I thought was fantastic for someone who, you know, was making his, uh, acting debut basically. I mean, yeah, wrestling is scripted, but let's, right. you know, for for a major motion picture, this is his Wait, debut. What? what? Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler. 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 Man, don't. Yeah. 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 If, if you're a wrestling fan, just pretend I didn't say that. Um, R A S S L I N. That's wrestling. Um, but no, what you said about the CGI though. What what else can you say about that scene that hasn't already been said about Iraq? It looked bombed out and depleted. To spill still a line from <laughs> Dave Chappelle. It oh, just what the f- it, it was it was terrible. It, we went from watching a live action movie to watching a cartoon to back to a live action in the span of two minutes. And when you said maybe they couldn't get someone to do the stunts, Glenn Jacob actually did all of his stunts for this film. So what and the fuck? <laughs> I have no doubt that he would have taken that bump. I mean, right. some of the bumps he's taken in his career. Exactly. Uh, in the wrestling industry. So that that just really, like you said, it killed it for me. Because up until then, I don't really have a lot of gripes about this movie. Just things here and there that I would like to do different. Things here or there that I can obviously tell is not an original idea. Things here or there, you know, whatever. But that, that CGI sequence was ass cheeks. And like you said earlier, the fact that they... We're going to use uh, CGI chain the entire movie. Thank God they didn't because it would have been a disaster. And uh, yeah. And but like you said, Brian, when you when you go go out of this what this film uh, and you watch the ending, you're like, okay, this is a one and done film. And, you know, because of the way the ending was shot and then you find out, oh, there's a sequel. So, yeah, I I get what you're saying there. I have the same same reservations myself. Uh, and I'm not going to touch on that film because maybe I'll pick it down the road. But uh, overall, I thought it was a it was a, like you said, Mike, is a fun 10 minutes. It's a fun ending. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it's satisfying. Yep. It just has one major thing that makes me want to give a double middle finger to WWE Studios. And that's that CGI. All that money Vince <laughs> McMahon has. We couldn't get some fucking better CGI around here. God damn it, pal. <laughs> Y'all ready to jump? Y'all, anybody got any final thoughts on the movie? Before we jump into fun facts, we've, we've said a lot of them that I had, but I've got three. I'll just go first real quick. Uh, Glenn Jacobs Kane has stated that the best thing about making this movie, due to the hectic amount of traveling as a professional professional wrestler, was the opportunity it gave him to sleep in the same bed for two months. It was mentioned in some interviews that Kane's co-stars were a little uneasy around the six foot seven uh, tall man. Fangoria Magazine mentions the director having to ask Kane to remain seated during cast introductions since one of the women who only came up to his sternum wouldn't come near him. And the last one I have is the film was shot in 32 days. Uh, does anybody else have fun facts they want to say? I got some. some. Okay, go ahead. Because all I have is the money, of course. Money okay, guy okay. So this was the first uh, major film produced by WWE Studios. Um, it was released May 19, 2006, which, like I said earlier, there was some significance in that date. Kane, Kane, Vic. <laughs> Kane on screen in WWE, uh, you know, Monday Night Raw. The rollout of for this film was written into the WWE storylines. Kane became enraged and attacked whoever said the date, May 19. It was explained on screen that that was the date of the fire that quote-unquote, killed his mother and maimed him and, and caused all this damage to him when he was younger. 
but uh, it was all part of an elaborate rollout package by WWE to promote the film. And I thought that was really well done because that's how that's what got my interest in the movie is because it was shoved down my throat every Monday night on Raw. I was like, fuck it, let's go see this movie. And I ended up liking it. Um, let's see. So there was there was multiple alternate alternative titles before See No Evil was decided upon, one of which was I Scream Man, E-Y-E, S-C-R-E-A-M, Man. <laughs> oh, you. God damn it. it. <laughs> of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching it with the See No Evil. That's terrible. That's horrible. Uh, fucking awful. Yeah, like I said, Kane ended up doing his own stunts for the film. The role for the film was actually specifically written for Kane. So WWE Studios, of course, they knew him, uh, dealing with him on a daily basis in the wrestling industry. They wrote the film role specifically for him. There is a novelization of the film out there if you would like to read it. It was written by the screenwriter Dave uh, Madigan. So same person wrote the film, also wrote the, uh, the novelization of it. And the last thing that I have, you know, uh, Kane is a one-time world heavyweight champion, and that is the same belt that was once held by David Arquette. Wonderful. (laughs) Uh, Okay. So, okay. Here we go. (laughs) Money man over here, although I should... uh, Honestly, Nico should do the money session, but anyway, that's fine. Um, The budget... (laughs) The budget... For this movie was eight million. Vince McMahon, you tight ass. The fuck, man. Anyway, <laughs> he's uh, the first. One. So, goddamn, pal. Okay. Anyway, eight million dollars. Uh, it made eighteen point six, so it made its budget back and then some. So, uh, it made a lot more than the sequel by like seventeen million dollars. So that shows you the appetite for the Jacob Goodnight character was not there. But well, uh, yeah. Well, it was a the straight sequel, to DVD as well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The sequel was also straight to DVD, so... Again, that's kind of the, you know... That's kind but of fun, too. But it had Daniel Harris, Catherine Isbell in it. It had a way better, you know, a horror cast, I would say. Oh, yeah, no doubt. But yeah, that's all I got, man. All righty, time for our favorite kill, least favorite kill in the rating. Uh, Dustin, your pick, first or last? Uh, I'll go ahead and knock mine out. I'll go ahead and knock it out. There we go. Um, Favorite kill was Williams. I, I love the way the hook, like he just fished him out of the hallway, like I said, and the way it was shot with the hook, you could actually see it coming up through the bottom of his jaw into his mouth. I thought that was very well done, effects wise. Uh, he hooked him like Nico hooks bass. I really appreciated that. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, my least favorite p- kill was Melissa because it was the fucking dogs and not Jacob. Like that really irritates me every time I watch it. Um, and as far as rating goes, listen, I do like this movie, but I'm not going to lie and say that it's a blockbuster. You know, I'm not going to say it's a film that you must see, but it is a film that I think you'll enjoy if you watch. So my rating may be lower than my actual like for the film, but I went with a flat seven. It's not the worst movie we reviewed, um, but it's not the best. It's just one that I personally like. Definitely better Fair than enough. Joyride. Go ahead. Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go next. Uh, all right, so I'm going to probably be alone on this one. My favorite kill uh, is Melissa. Uh, I think getting dropped from the window, hitting her head, getting her arm broken and bone popping out, then eaten by dogs. Uh, that's the way that I would at least like to get killed in this movie, so that was my favorite. Uh, the runner-up was Zoe with the cell phone. I, I was torn between those two kills, so I just gave Zoe the runner-up on that one. Uh my least favorite, I disagree with you again, Dustin. Sorry, brother. Uh, Russell, it was off screen and just another eye gouge. I mean, the second that she starts getting pulled up, it was pretty easy to think. Can't, or, or, you know, Jacob got through and killed her. All right, my rating, I gave it a six and a quarter. Uh, pros, this is a fun, entertaining watch if you want to burn an hour and, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, Kane is a badass wrestler and an evil villain. Uh, good kills for the most part. And it takes me back to high school. And I thought I, it had a decent twist with uh, Margaret being the mom. I didn't really get a lot of Friday the 13th flash or, you know, just because it was a mom. I don't I don't I don't see that. I mean, I guess if you want to get real, real into it. But it was it was it was real different from, you know, I mean, she bullied Jacob. It wasn't the camp kids bullying, you know, Jason. So I, I, I like the twist. 
Uh, the cons, this is a fun watch, but when you review it, uh, there's quite a bit of flaws. I thought the acting was pretty awful. Uh, why are these delinquents given so much freedom in this uh, burned-down motel? <laughs> like, there's one officer, and they're just allowed to do whatever the hell they want to. Uh, there's a lot of filler and flashbacks. And I wrote, please, Director Gregory Dart, uh, uh, leave the flashbacks and the fast-rotating shots to James Wan and Saul. Uh, this is a fun watch, but the movie has its flaws. Mike, Brian, whoever wants to go next. Uh, but I gave it a next. quarter. I liked it. Okay. Um, yeah, so my favorite kill is Zoe in the cell phone. I thought it was so unique and so different that I really had no choice but to put it there. Like, I just thought it was really the only one I've seen as far as the way that person was killed. So props to whoever came up with that kill because really damn creative. My least favorite is the elevator kill. I shit on it earlier, so I'm going to shit on it here. I, I, okay, you got your head smushed or something? Like, I... I don't know. Like, it just not – it wasn't for me. Okay. So I think this is an enjoyable watch. Like, I think it's it's short, so it really helps its case. If this movie ran any longer, we'd be in some trouble. Like, some, like, 4.5, 3.5 territory. Like, because there is some major flaws. Because, it, again, it is Slasher Movie's greatest hits. Like, it, it – if it had an album name, it would have all, like – it would basically slap our logo on it and be like greatest hits. Like that's what it would be. <laughs> and, and, and so, so, you know, when, when I put it in that perspective, I don't think it's a bad thing, but I don't think it's a good thing either that I think they just barred from every popular trend at the time being dirty and gross and grungy. And like the way they shot the kills and stuff like that is very saw, very hostile, very Texas chainsaw massacre. I like all of those things, but they kind of like shoved, uh, you know, it's in pounds of shit into a two pound bag with this movie, at least in my opinion. So there's a lot going on, but there's also a lot of filler. <laughs> and so, so, you know, that being said, I gave it a flat six. Like I, and by the way, that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't enjoy this movie. I can pop this in and watch it anytime, but, uh, yeah. So, you know, overall, I just give it a, just a flat six. It's, it's a fun film. It's not, you know, the like world's greatest horror movie or anything. I don't, I'm not going to go out of my way to recommend it, but it is it is a fun watch as a horror movie. I, and as someone who really likes slasher movies, I think this is something that I can always pop in and enjoy. I have no issue with it. Now, reviewing it and critiquing it is one thing. Just popping it in to have a horror movie on in the background, I'm a I'm a fan of it. So, flat six. I probably right. could have went a little higher. I kind of want to bump it up for you know the cane bump. I mean, every movie gets a cane bump. But uh, <laughs> actually, it got a cane bump because it would be a 5.5 if it had anybody else in it. My, yeah. like, I was just about to say, if it, if it didn't have Kane, and let's just say we take the guy from the first joy ride, Rusty Nail, not Ted Levine's voice, just that guy, and he's Jacob Goodnight. No, this movie's like a four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a four. <laughs> For me, it's a four point two five in my book, pal. Yeah. Yeah, easily. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, so my best kill, I agree with you guys. I mean, I liked the graphics of Officer Williams dying, um, but I really like the uniqueness of the cell phone kill again. I think that's definitely appreciated and <clears throat> appreciated in my book. And uh, the worst kill to me is actually Tyson uh, with the safe. I just felt like he deserved better than that, like, you know, to go out a, a better way. So uh, and I thought that was kind of an easy, let's throw the TV on stew kind of kill. Um, again... You know, this movie is an easy watch. Um, you know, I, I've kind of said everything that I did in my opening about it. I don't, and, and I'm, I'm going to give it a five, a flat five. And I really don't think, I mean, that's, and I don't really mean it like a bad five. You know, yeah. I think I gave, I think I gave like um, uh, Rob Zombie's first Halloween a five just because I said, you know, half a movie, he made half a movie that was good. So he gets half the score, but I really don't mean it this way. Uh you know, as far as this is concerned, because, I mean, it's actually is, is all right. And I felt like a five was a good score to me when it give you this. But, you know, I know it's lower than everybody else's, but um, that's kind of where I am, about five, five point five range. So that, so that leaves us uh, overall with a composite score of six point oh six two five. So I guess I was wrong. I guess Joyride is a better movie, according to our expert panel. But because <laughs> <laughs> we gave it a six point three something, but still, well, we're not we're not rating by better movies. We're just rating by favorites. Right. So. That's true. That's true. And by the way, had I had had I reviewed this yesterday without having notes, I probably would have given it a higher score. But after I really sat down and watched it again it. today and kind of critiqued it, and I had it on again here in the background, and I keep seeing the flaws. And you had asked me yesterday, it probably would have been around a seven. But there's well, that CGI upon second watch really fucks this movie up for me. 
We didn't even mention the uh, two scenes with uh, visible boom mics in it. I was going to leave that out, but if you're talking flaws, <laughs> that happens. So. Fuck it. This movie's a two. Fuck this movie. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Still better than Audition. Uh, Just saying. Anyway. That's, that's not hard to be better than. Uh, <laughs> God damn. Two hours long, too. Jesus Christ. Uh, this is a fun movie. I tried to dodge my eyes out during that movie. Just like Jake Goodnight. I literally tried <laughs> Yeah, that movie was painful. We were about to uh, see how much blood comes out. <laughs> like that. <laughs> this was a fun movie to review. It was a fun watch. I enjoyed it. Um, let's go ahead and announce our next two weeks we're doing. Uh, we're going to take on the uh, kind of an intimidating two movies to me. Not really that they're going to be hard to review. They're just both long. We're going to be reviewing the two new It movies. I'm looking forward to it. Uh yeah, so expect some longer episodes, I think, guys. But we're going to break them down as best we can, scene by scene. Uh, I, lo- I, I, I will go ahead and just spoil it. I do love Pennywise in both of them. Bill Skarsgård yes. is freaking amazing. He's great. But we're going to dive know. deeper into both of these two movies in the next two weeks. Y'all got any final thoughts before we get out of here? I do not. Poor little Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin, you got any final thoughts on your movie choice, brother? Uh, that's all I got, but you can guarantee I'm going to choke slam all of y'all for shitting on it next time I see you. Hey, Dustin. Bro, I gave it a six and a quarter. That's pretty good. Hey, I'm about to say I gave it a six. That's above average, buddy. Come on. No, no, no. no hey. I'm, ki- I'm, kicking, I'm kicking you in the shin for hating on Paul Walker. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, uh, hey, Dustin. Better movie. See No Evil or Wes Craven's New Nightmare? I'll hang up and listen. The fuck? It's not. That shouldn't be a fucking question. <laughs> Hold on, I'm asking Dustin, not Brian. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. Yeah. Oh man, no answer. Should okay. We spo- should we spoil it? Should we spoil it? Uh, expect some. Expect a bonus sh- show maybe later on this week. Um, and a and, uh, quick shout out. Brian has been uh, updating a lot of our older episodes for you know from the very beginning. He's been adding some intros and. Uh, you know, adding some cool, some cool flavor to it. You know, we got all these celebrity intros and these clips. We figured we might as well add them to the original episodes too. Uh, we really appreciate everyone who's been listening, and we we really appreciate the support. It's awesome. Y'all have a good one. And uh, just want to remind everybody to uh, don't go out there. Bye.